Hello, uh, this is Michael Good. I'm the CEO of University of Utah Health. Today is Tuesday, uh, June 16th, 2020, and I provide you with an update on coronavirus at the University of Utah uh, in Salt Lake and throughout uh, the nation. I'll call up my screen here to begin this uh, Zoom presentation. Again, a COVID update as of the evening of June 16th, uh, 2020. First, we look at the nation, where we see this is a chart of the new cases recorded each day of coronavirus in the United States. And you can see that uh, back here in uh, April, uh, we were seeing around 30,000 new cases of coronavirus uh, each day in the United States. And that's kind of steadily but slowly declined to where we're now seeing around 20,000 uh, new cases a day. So as you can see, uh, cases have dropped about 30% uh, over this two, two and a half month period uh, at the national level. Interestingly, uh, deaths are also declining from coronavirus, uh, but at a much faster rate. Back here uh, toward the middle of April, we were seeing around 2,200 uh, deaths each day in the United States from coronavirus, and that's decreased now to around 700 to 800 uh, on a daily basis. So while the new cases have come down, uh, about 30% deaths from coronavirus have decreased uh, around 60%. So good trends uh, at the national level. Uh, here in the state of Utah, after a period of uh, new cases kind of hovering in the one to 200 range, we have toward the end of May and uh, on into June seen this new increase in the number of cases. Still bouncing around uh, day to day, uh, but many of the days around 300 new cases confirmed by a positive a coronavirus test here uh, in the state of Utah. Uh, this is a chart that I follow particularly closely. It's the number of active cases, active coronavirus cases at any one time. Many of our statistics are cumulative statistics and they continue to increase throughout the pandemic. But as you can see, throughout most of the month of May, we had around uh, 3,100 to 3,200 active cases of coronavirus uh, in the state of Utah. And so if you think about that uh, with our 3.2 million uh, population, uh, throughout most of May, we were seeing one positive coronavirus case per 1,000 uh, Utahns, 1,000 citizens in uh, Utah. Uh, this uh, toward the end of May, uh, with a number of things happening from the Memorial Day holiday to some of the changes in the restriction levels, uh, gatherings, uh, uh, protests, uh, other gatherings, uh, resumption of business activity, uh, many things changing in our community. We have seen the number of active cases grow from this 31 to 3,200 to uh, Yesterday, uh, 6,300 uh, uh, cases, active cases of COVID. Again, in our state of 3.2 million. So we've seen about a doubling from one in a thousand to two per 1,000 uh, over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks. Clearly something we're watching closely. Um, if you look at some of the other statistics related to the coronavirus pandemic in the state of Utah. Uh, we are just shy of 15,000 cases uh, total. This is, the cur this is the cumulative rate, 5.4% is the cumulative rate of positive tests throughout the whole uh, pandemic. This entire uh, 275,000 tests that have been performed. But many, the positive rate in recent weeks has been up closer to seven, eight, and in some cases, 9%. So a higher testing rate uh, in recent weeks. 
Uh, on a positive side, we continue to see a low hospitalization rate uh, in Utah, just over a thousand Utahns hospitalized. The hospitalization rate has uh, come down from the mid eights, eight and a half to approaching almost 7% uh, now. Um, a variety of factors are thought to be at work there. One, we are testing more and more Utahns. The more tests we perform, uh, we pick up lower, uh, less symptomatic uh, uh, cases. Um, uh, the overall health of our state, many factors probably both known and unknown, uh, but this is a, a, a good thing. Uh, to have this lower hospitalization rate. We're at 145 deaths. This is the sixth uh, lowest mortality rate uh, from coronavirus in the country, holding pretty steady at 1%. Uh, percent. As I like to uh, point out, 99% um, of Utahns who contract coronavirus will, will recover. 99% will recover. 93% will recover at home uh, without going to the hospital. I also like to comment that of the 145 deaths, 43% or 63 have been residents of long-term uh, care facilities. This coronavirus uh, uh, is particularly both transmitted more easily and more severely impacts those at higher age levels and those with multiple medical conditions. And those are often uh, the individuals that we find in our over 300 licensed long-term care facilities uh, in Utah. So uh, the state is really working hard, uh, the uh, Utah Department of Health, to focus its efforts and really slowing down, understanding, slowing down, and being quick to test and isolate uh, in long-term care facilities uh, throughout our state. Um, I'm very pleased uh, uh, Dr. Yu Zhang and Dr. Matt Seymour, who are members of our University of Utah faculty, each week help us calculate the re real-time uh, reproductive number. This is the number of individuals that each person who contracts coronavirus, uh, how many other individuals uh, they infect. And early on uh, in this pandemic, uh, each individual with coronavirus was uh, transmitting the virus to two and three other individuals. For almost the entire months of April and May, uh, we hovered pretty close to the one line, meaning each person who had coronavirus on average uh, infected one other individual. Same kind of time frame here toward the end of May, uh, we began to see this reproductive number push upward and uh, come up toward uh, 1.5, 1.4, 1.5. Um, but in recent, uh, the recent week has uh, started to come back down again toward one. Now the confidence intervals in the more recent data are wider, uh, so we really need to wait another week or two uh, to see where this transmission rate uh, settles out. And of course, what we would really like is to see this pandemic will not slow down until we can get this uh, reproduction number down below one and we begin to see a, a decrease uh, in the number uh, of cases. Uh, but that's where we are with real-time reproductive number. We now transition and begin to look at hospitalizations. Uh, first, in the state of Utah, the gray bars show the number of hospitalizations on any particular day. Uh, note that it takes about a week uh, before this report gets rolled up. So the most recent data point here is the 10th of June, which was a particularly high day. Uh, four hospitalizations around uh, 23. But you can see that for most of the periods we've been looking at, we've been having between about seven and 15 uh, hospitalizations throughout the state. The blue line shows whether hospital demand is increasing or decreasing. And you can see that 
over the course uh, of the last couple months, we've had periods where demand was increasing, periods where demand was decreasing. Clearly, we're on a, a track where demand is again uh, increasing, although uh, at this level, uh, these are levels that the hospital systems in the state uh, of Utah uh, uh, can handle. And the hospitals are working together uh, to coordinate with one another uh, to do this uh, to the best of our collective ability. Here in Salt Lake, a uh, similar uh, graph, you can see that on most days in Salt Lake, we have uh, between six and seven, occasionally eight, uh, hospital admissions for COVID. Again, the 10th of June was a day uh, with uh, 12 or 13 admissions. Uh, similar patterns of periods of declining hospital requirements, uh, more hospital, lower, kind of stable here at the moment uh, in Salt Lake County. The other thing these graphs and charts that I share with you uh, show is just how transduced, how connected uh, we are to data that matters, metrics that matter uh, as we track the coronavirus pandemic in our community. These monitoring systems did not exist uh, two months ago, and I certainly feel much more confident that we can manage uh, uh, waves, periods of increasing and decreasing uh, numbers of coronavirus patients because of the data systems uh, our community together uh, has put in place. Similar picture here uh, at the University of Utah Hospital. Uh, most days uh, where we are uh, uh, admitting somewhere between uh, one and three patients in the university hospital uh, for most of this pandemic. We've had a couple of periods along the way uh, where we've had a little bit heavier activity. Um, and clearly over time, our cumulative admissions uh, shown in the blue line, although they, like the other charts, go up and down. Clearly there is an increasing trend of hospitalizations at university hospital um, and I can actually show you that even better. Uh, this is our census. So the first chart I showed you, the previous chart was the number of admissions. This chart is the number of patients at University Hospital uh, with coronavirus. And uh, throughout late April and much of May, we had a round of 15 patients. Uh, then we went through a period where we were handling 20 to 25 patients. Uh, and in the last week, consistent with the other charts, we're now handling between uh, 25 and 30 patients. Most of those patients shown by the light gray line are on our hospital wards. They're in our acute care unit and about 10 patients at any one time uh, are in our intensive care unit. And so uh, that's kind of a review of where we are at uh, at the nat national level the state level, and here at the University of Utah Health. Um, I'll close just by emphasizing right now how important it is that we do four things, uh, and in particular, uh, wear a mask. Uh, we've gone to a universal masking uh, policy practice at University of Utah Health. All staff, patients, visitors, uh, everyone, uh, we're trying to wear masks uh, at all times. We continue to frequently uh, wash hands, uh, practice physical distancing when we can, and do not come to work. Really, do not come out of your house. Stay at home uh, if you have any signs of illness, uh, no matter how mild they may be. But we do need the viruses moving on us a little bit in our community. Um, it is important that we find the right levels of community interaction, the right level of businesses, uh, the right level of many things that we can do uh, while, uh, uh, and, and, the, and for example, wearing a mask is one of the things that we can do that allows more uh, activity uh, to happen at any of the uh, restriction levels. I think this graphic on the right uh, that we've, uh, incorporated from uh, University of Kansas, nicely shows why masks are so important. 
and that if we have an individual who's got COVID and one who does not, if two, those two individuals are together, you have a very high risk of transmitting COVID from the infected person to the uninfected person. If the uninfected person has a mask, uh, that's still a high risk. Remember, the, most, the mask is most effective on the carrier of a COVID, but they may be asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic. So because we don't always know when we've come down with coronavirus, or if we're in the early hours and, and day uh, of an impending infection, uh, having the mask on the infected person is most important. If we can get masks on everyone, both the carrier and the uninfected uh, individual, that's actually a low risk. There's a very low risk of uh, transmission if both parties uh, are wearing a mask. And finally, if we can keep the six feet of distance, remember uh, when an individual sneezes or coughs, respiratory droplets uh, can move for most of us about three feet. Uh, for some, I like to call them the Olympic sneezers. Uh, sometimes the respiratory droplets can move six feet. That's why we promote maintaining the physical distance, wearing the masks, and particularly for high-risk individuals, we continue to stress the need to stay at home. That is the, the, the lowest risk um, uh, situation. But for many of us who do need to work, who do need um, to have uh, interactions with other individuals, Getting the masks on everybody is the most important thing uh, we can do right now. So again, that's uh, where we're at uh, as of today, the evening of Tuesday, June 16th. Uh, I'll be looking forward to coming to you each week uh, for the remainder of the summer and on into the fall a semester here at the University of Utah with weekly updates uh, on the coronavirus pandemic uh, here in our community. Thanks everyone for working together. Uh, we are all in this together and working together. We will beat coronavirus at the University of Utah. Have a good evening.